So let's talk about tricking your phone and Instagram by exporting videos in Premiere Pro and uploading them to your Instagram stories. Hey, this is Meredith from vidpromom.com and the VidPro Studio Show podcast. And in this week's episode, which is number 15, I interviewed the Premiere gal herself, Miss Kelsey Brannon. If you're not familiar, Kelsey is the Premiere gal on YouTube. She creates Premiere Pro tutorials and a whole bunch of other tutorials as well. And in sort of in honor of that episode where I interviewed Kelsey, I created a Premiere Pro tutorial for you. I don't know about you, but as soon as Instagram came out with their Instagram stories feature, I stopped using Snapchat like almost completely. I've actually been using the Instagram stories more than I've been posting regular Instagram posts. So I love Instagram stories, but there is a little bit of a limitation in that it's very difficult to upload a, you know, a pre-recorded or pre, you know, produced kind of video like I would upload to YouTube. It's really hard to translate that and post that on Instagram stories. But because I use Premiere Pro to edit my YouTube videos, I figured out a really easy way to do it. And basically what we have to do is trick our iPhone and Instagram into thinking that we have a 15 second video that we just shot with our phone. And so I have a tutorial on how to do this with Premiere Pro. I think you could probably do this with any video editing software as long as you can change your sequence settings and change your image size. So like typically a video, like the video I'm shooting right now is 1080. So it's 1920 wide by 1080 high, right? So we need to create a sequence that is like a, a rectangle this way instead of this way. Okay, so I have Premiere Pro open here and what you can see down here on the timeline is my YouTube video. Um, called Behind the Scenes of My Podcast. So I edited this timeline completely. I exported it. I uploaded it to YouTube. This is what it looks like on the timeline. So now I need to take some of these clips and turn them into an Instagram story or to turn them into a couple of files that I can upload as an Instagram story so that I can have a little bit of a teaser to hopefully get people from Instagram to jump over to my YouTube channel and watch my latest video. So what we need to do in order to accomplish that, and I have a template already open. So I have, this is called Behind the Scenes of My Podcast IG, which stands for Instagram Stories. So I always just duplicate the same exact template every time, and I always have this gray background. But um, let me show you how to create a new sequence with the right dimensions for Instagram Stories. So I just went to new um, sequences, and I'm just going to call this sequence name Instagram story. And the dimensions we want this to be are 750 by 1334 pixels. I have an iPhone 6S and th that's the dimensions of my device. If you have a different device, you're going to want to Google what are the dimensions of your device and create your sequence to be that exact size. Because if it's not, then Instagram won't recognize your files um, as, you know, as a recent photo or video for you to upload. So it has to, you have to kind of trick Instagram into thinking that this is a video file that you shot on your phone. So mine is 750 by 1334. So I'm just gonna put that in the sequence name just so that I remember um, what it is. And then instead of having to like figure out exactly what all the settings need to be for me. I always use DSLR 1080p 30 uh, preset as like the, the basis for everything that I do. So I'm gonna select that, but then I'm gonna come over here to settings and I'm gonna change the frame size. So I need 750 horizontal by 1334 vertical. Okay, so we want our frame size to be 750 by 1334. And again, you will need to put in the dimensions of your device here. And then I'm not gonna change anything else here. I have my sequence name there. I'm just gonna hit okay. So now I have a brand new sequence. As you can see, it's that this vertical orientation. So I'm going to come back to this one here. I just have a title that is my background. Um, I like to have just a nice 
you know, I would do white, but then it's kind of like really bright. You could do black. You could do any color. This is just a title um, screen. So if you know how to create a title, all it is is just a, you know, a rectangle with the colors that I want on here. You could create, you know, something um, like watch my new video. You could create something, some sort of like a call to action or something if you wanted to. Um, and have that, oops, and have that there. Um, if you wanted to do that, I don't do that. I just, I like to add um, my little like words and flourishes and stuff on Instagram. So I'm going to close that out and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So I have my background here on my first layer. And what I need to do is come over here to my edited version here. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take the first little bit of this. So I'm just kind of copying everything. Um, I guess I'll copy the music too. Yeah, I'll copy down all the way down to the music. So I'm copying and then I'm just going to come over here and paste it so my gray background is going to stay in place and everything else is going to show up on top of it so as you can see we have a little bit of an issue here right because um my video is 1920 by 1080 and obviously it does not fit into the dimensions of this sequence. So personally, what I do, and you are totally free to, to use your creativity here and do whatever you think is, is going to work out best for you. But what I do is I'll select this very first clip and I will scale it down a little bit. And then usually what I do is I rotate it just, just a little bit. And then Sometimes I like to just kind of go corner to corner and then I'll also move, uh, move it up or down, you know, whatever works. So yeah, I like to go corner to corner like that. I like to try to, you know, make sure that I'm in the actual middle of the screen when I'm talking. Really bad job of promoting the VidPro Studio show. So you could do anything here. You could flip your... Um, flip your video around completely if you wanted to, um, you know, and then people will have to turn their, turn their phone over to watch. Um, you know, a lot of people shoot video like that anyway, you know, in Instagram stories and on Snapchat and stuff. So you could do that and just export sideways like this, or you could scale it down, you know, almost all the way and then just position it somehow on the screen. And then you could write stuff up here, put emojis or pictures or titles or whatever. Um, or you could even move it, you know, up on the screen. There's, you know, any number of things that you could do here. Um, so be creative with it. Um, like I said, you don't have to copy me, but I do, I like to, I like to rotate mine and I always rotate it this direction. And then, um, let me get it back into place here and maybe, okay. So it does not, doesn't have to be perfect. And then, um, the Instagram stories need to be 15 seconds or less. So what I usually do is I'll put, I'll set my in point hey, this is Meredith, and, and then I'll just I go to, you really know, either to just about 15 seconds show, or, um, Someplace where it just makes sense to kind of cut it off. In pursuit of, you know, I really just want to pick their brains. So that's a good place to stop there. So we're at 14 seconds and 25, I don't know, milliseconds. I don't know what those are. So I'm going to hit the out button there. So I actually need to rotate this clip also, uh, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is let me make sure that this one is exactly how I wanted it. Okay, so I have that one where I want that one to be. So all I have to do then is if I come over here and just highlight this motion under video effects and just command copy, or if you're on a PC, you can probably hit control 
C. So Command C on a Mac, and then once I highlight the other, the other um, clip over here, and I just paste it, then I'm pasting those settings. In pursuit of, you know, I really just want to pick their brain. So that way it's seamless. I, ha I don't have to manually rotate and resize and all that stuff. I just copy the motion settings from the one clip and apply them to the next clip. So I have my 14 seconds here that I'm ready to export. And I could either just, you know, hit export and let her rip and create a file, but I'm going to queue all of my files like all right in a row. So what I'm gonna do here under format is H264. I'm gonna leave that. The preset, I am also going to leave that. So the only thing we're gonna need to do is change our output name. So I'm gonna select that. And then I need to open up my Dropbox because I wanna save this in Dropbox. So we're gonna say, um, so this one was called behind the scenes of my podcast. And we'll say IG1. Now I'm gonna be creating a couple clips here, like maybe four or five, maybe more, it really depends. So I don't wanna write this every single time. So I'm just gonna copy this part of it and then I can always paste it. And we can just hit Q and it's gonna open up um, Adobe Media, Media Encoder and we're, we're good to go with that. I'm gonna leave that there for right now. Okay, so I am going to actually, I need to apply my motion settings to all of my clips. So I'm just gonna go through here, apply this to everything so that I don't have to come back and do it again and again. And there may be an easier or quicker way to do this, but this is fine. So I'm just pasting, I'm just selecting the clip and pasting so that all of these are turned on their side. Over here I have some other things. I'm probably gonna just get rid of those because I'm not gonna use that part. And then over here, I might keep those. So we'll turn turn that and we'll turn this one. We'll see. And I give them like two. And then we'll turn that and we'll turn this and we'll turn that and this and this and this and this and this. Okay. So I have all of my clips now turned on their sides <laughs> and, and we should be good to go there. So I've already exported my first 14 ish seconds. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set my endpoint. I just wanted to talk to people. So and I'm looking, I'm going to be looking for um, the next, to ask a really um, you know, anywhere like, like 14, right. 15 I'm seconds, but probably not creator. longer because then Instagram's not going to want you to upload that. So I'm going to come right to here and out there. And then I have eight seconds there. So I think that'll be good. I'm going to hit Command M. Paste in our title, but then I added the number two after that. Hit save and then go to Q. So I'm just basically looking through my footage to see what else I wanna include in my Instagram story because you have to keep in mind this is a teaser. I don't wanna give it all away. I want it to be fun and kind of short and you know snappy. So now I have all these clips that are less than 15 seconds long that all I have, they're gonna take like, not much time to export. So they're here in Media Encoder and I'm going to hit play so that it exports all of them. And then I'll show you what happens on my phone in order to get them to upload. These clips are still exporting, but here on my phone, I'm not gonna open up Instagram yet. I'm gonna open up Dropbox. And you can see I have BTS Podcast IG1, two, three, four, five, and we still have six that's exporting now. So what I need to do is actually just click on that and then up in the top right, just hit export, save video, and it's gonna save to my camera roll. And then we're just gonna go through and do this for every single um, clip that I exported. I'm gonna open up Instagram and all we have to do is swipe up with our finger and we'll have any photos or videos that we've taken on our phone in the last 24 hours. So like I said, we have to kind of trick uh, Instagram into thinking that we just took these photos with our, 
with, with our phone. So I'm going to come here to the very first one, this is Meredith which is right I here. And really um, so basically, it's as if you had just podcast, shot the, the video on your phone. Um, I like to just dress mine up a little of, bit. You know, I really just um, let's see. Add some hey, color. I like to just really cover up these um, edges the show, which is my and podcast, maybe say pursuit of like that. You know, I really just want to pick maybe the brain. Put hey, this, this is down Meredith, here. And, I have been doing and then really bad when you're good to go, you just hit person. add to your story. Hey, this is Meredith, and I have been doing there you go. Really so here are, are some clips that I'm uploading to Instagram stories from another video that I did recently, but I want to show you from beginning to end kind of how I do it and how, you know, you can add your own style and flourishes and words and all that stuff to your screen. So let's take a look. That I know you guys are using. One of my goals this year is to create video tutorials on all or most of the video editing software that I know you guys are using. One of my goals this year is to create video tutorials on all or most of the video editing software that I know you guys are using. One of my goals this year is to create video tutorials on all or most of the video editing software that I know you guys are using. One of my goals this year is to create video tutorials on all or I've covered Premiere Elements, Premiere Pro, Filmora, GoPro Studio, but I haven't done anything with PowerDirector yet. So I've covered Premiere Elements, Premiere Pro, Filmora, GoPro Studio, but I haven't done anything with PowerDirector yet. So I've covered Premiere Elements, Premiere Pro, Filmora, GoPro Studio, but I haven't done anything with PowerDirector yet. So I've covered Premiere Elements, Premiere Pro, Filmora, GoPro Studio, but I haven't done anything with PowerDirector yet. So I've covered Premiere Elements, Premiere Pro, Filmora, GoPro Studio, but I haven't done anything. And I'll be honest, I am a Mac girl. And I like PowerDirector too. There actually wasn't anything that I didn't like about it. It's very professional and easy to use, and it's really packed with features. And I'll be honest, I am a Mac girl. And I like PowerDirector too. There actually wasn't anything that I Hey, this is Meredith from vidpromom.com, and over the last few weeks, I've had a chance to play with Cyberlink PowerDirector for some video editing. One of my goals this year is to create video tutorials on all or most of the video editing software that I know you guys are using. I've covered Premiere Elements, Premiere Pro, Filmora, GoPro Studio, but I haven't done anything with PowerDirector yet. So I'll be honest, I am a Mac girl. And I like PowerDirector too. There actually wasn't anything that I didn't like about it. It's very professional and easy to use and it's really packed with features. So that's it, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, give me that thumbs up. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see any more Premiere Pro tutorials from me. And don't forget to check out Kelsey over at Premiere Gal um, on YouTube and all the social media networks. Um, she's super talented and she has lots and lots of great tutorials on using Premiere Pro. So check that out and my interview with her over on the VidPro Studio Show, episode number 15. Oh, and subscribe to this channel if you wanna hear from me again in the future. Bye.